so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a short summary, how to solve such of the problems step by step. And then uh, I will give you 10 minutes to finish the quiz. Okay, so uh, for the free body diagram, I think the very important thing is to figure out how many forces are, are there on the object. So if you miss one force, then you will uh, get a wrong acceleration. Um, so let me give you the problem solution first. So here, uh, last time we end up with homework and this is a very important problem because we are going to figure out the acceleration and how to use um, Newton's second law to figure out a non-zero acceleration. Um, I will show you two methods to solve this problem. And uh, uh, if you have any question, you can stop me anytime you want. And if you give me your feedback, I think that will be easy for me to know where you feel confused. Okay, there are two blocks. One is a brick and the weight is 15 kilogram. And the other is a counterweight that's a 28 kilogram. And uh, from the from this description, we should know the brick is going to move up and the counterweight is going to move down. Um, okay, and they connect with a rope. The rope has a tension. And if there's a tension, that means the rope is tight and the brick and the uh, counterweight should share the same acceleration. First question, draw two free body diagrams, one for the load of bricks and one for the counterweight. Okay. To figure out uh, how many forces exerted on the, uh, on the brick and the counterweight, let's follow the rule. The first one is gravity. Gravity and um, gravity, everyone has gravity. So we can draw the gravity. Break. This is gravity for the break, and this is uh, gravity for the counterweight. Second one will be uh, normal force. And from this diagram, there's no interface, no surface, so there's no normal force. Third one is friction. Friction, it says uh, the pulley is frictionless, so we don't need to consider friction. Number four, external force. The external force in this case will be the tension. Okay. So everybody connect with a string rope, so they should have a tension. And there is a tension on the brick, it should go up. And there is a tension on the counterweight and also goes up. And if I um, just make sure the positive direction in the Y component, let me define the positive is up. Okay, that's the positive direction. Okay, then we complete the free body diagram for um, both of the object. Okay, so when we have the free body diagram, let's figure out, um, is there any um, relation between these parameters? And the weights are different. So the weight for the brake and the weight for the counterweight, they are not equal. So we have this to an equivalent. But for the tension, the tension on the string is uh, action and reaction pair force. According to the Newton's third law, the action force and reaction force are equivalent. So the tension on the brake should equal to the tension on the counterweight in, in the value magnitude, because this is action and the reaction pair force. Okay, so that means these two tension have the same value. I just put the 
um, the tension in the same label. Okay, so the next question is, what's the magnitude of the upward acceleration of the load brakes? And how to figure out the magnitude of the acceleration? We're going to use Newton's second law. Newton's second law said um, the net force of the brake equal to the mass of the brake. Put it right here for the brake. And mass times acceleration of brake. And also for the counterweight. The total of the force is equal to the mass of the counterweight times acceleration. They connect by a rope, and the rope has a tension. So these two guys share the same motion. If they share the same motion, that means uh, the brake and the counterweight. Here, the same motion. They have the same acceleration, the same velocity, and the same displacement. It is very important. So the A here and the A here, they are the same thing. Then let's um, solve the equation. Um, for the brake, we know uh, the net force is uh, the tension and the weight. Right? Um, the tension goes up, that's positive, and the weight goes down, that's negative. So we have T minus MBG equals MBA. And from the second equation for the counterweight, we know the weight goes up, that's positive, and the mass, go, uh, the weight goes down, that's negative. And this is equal to the mass times acceleration. Let's solve this equation to get acceleration. We can cancel the tension, right? So from the first equation, we know the tension is MBA plus MBG. Then we plug in to the second equation, and we'll have MBA plus MBG minus MCG equal to MCA. Then the acceleration will be, let me write somewhere else. Right here. Um, okay. So that will be uh, A equals uh, MB minus MC. Oh, hold on, I get something wrong here. Um, oh, I make a mistake. Um, the acceleration for the second one goes down. So A goes down. So this is a negative. I should have a negative sign here. That's negative. Um, for the brake, acceleration goes up. So that's positive. Positive. And for the counterweight, acceleration goes down. So that's negative. Right. So I should have a negative here. And I have a negative here. Negative. Then I have M A. To solve this equation, we have A equals um, the mass difference times G over the sum of the mass. Okay, this is just the solution of this equation. Do you have any other question? Okay, if there's no question, I'm going to move on. And part C, what's the tension in the rope? And to solve the tension, we just need to uh, plug the acceleration into one of the equations that we can solve the tension. 
the from the uh, part B, the acceleration is the acceleration can be solved. Let me check solution. The acceleration is 2.96 meter per second squared. Okay, so that's acceleration. So we uh, let's use the first equation. We know the acceleration. We know the mass. So the tension to be solved. The tension will be what? Uh, 191. And how does the tension compare to the weight of the load of brakes and the counterweight? So for the counterweight, let's write down here. The tension is 191 Newton and the weight of the brake, this guy multiplied by 9.8. For example, this is around uh, the weight of the brake is around 190, uh, 150. And the weight of the counterweight is 28, this is around 280 Newton. Okay. So you can find that the weight of the brake is smaller than the tension, but the tension is smaller than the weight of counterweight. So that makes sense because this guy is heavier than this guy. So the motion should, should be the brake goes up and the counterweight goes down. Then if the weight brake goes up, that means the tension on the brake is larger than the weight of brake. If the counterweight goes down, that means the tension of the counterweight is smaller than weight of the counterweight. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so, so far, I just uh, figured out the tension and acceleration by using free body diagram of each element. Then we can solve the, yeah, any question? Nope, okay. Um, so let me say, if we draw the free body for each element, here we have two elements, the brake and the counterweight. Then we find that the acceleration is the same, the tension is the same. So we only have two unknown parameters. One is tension, the other is acceleration. Then we can use the equation and from the Newton's second law to solve the acceleration and the tension. Then you might ask a question, can we use other methods, other quick method to draw the conclusion? So here, I show you another method. Second method. So from the motion we know, the brake and the counterweight share the same motion. Share the motion. That means we can treat these two guys as one unit. For example, if we have two blocks and they connect together and we use a force to drag the, the right block and both these two blocks move on the right side with the same speed, same acceleration, and same displacement. Then we can treat this two block as one block. And they, because they have the same uh, acceleration, then the net force will be F. Then what's the acceleration? The acceleration of this, of this one unit will be the net force over the sum of the mass, one M2. So the mass of the first guy is M1, the mass of second box is M2. So that's the acceleration. If we treat these two box separately, we have to draw free body diagram for each block. And then we will find that there is F and there will be a tension and for the second one, there will be a tension. Okay. Then 
we have to write down two equations because we have two block. But if we treat this two block as one unit, then the acceleration could be very easy to get. The net force over the total mass. And we can treat something, um, if we can treat many body uh, as one unit, there should be a condition is that everybody in this unit should share the same motion. It's very important. They should have the same acceleration, the same velocity, and the same displacement. Okay, if we have such condition, then uh, to solve the acceleration would be very easy. Maybe right here. So from this pulley, we can simplify this diagram as a uh, brake drag in this way and they connect with a rope. And on the other side of the rope, there is a counterweight, 28 is 15 kilogram. And the 15 kilogram brake want to move um, in the downside. So the brake want to move downside. They want to move in this way, this is speed. Uh, this is uh, the force. This is the force for the brake. They want to move downside, but the 28 kilogram block want to move upward. So there's a force. So they stretch this rope, and finally, this two block will move upward because the 28 kilogram give the uh, heavier weight and the, the counterweight will dominate the motion. But since the brake and the counterweight share the same, share the, the motion, then we can treat this two guy as unit. If we treat these two guys as a unit, then for this unit, there are only two force on this unit. One is a weight. One is a force drag this unit downward. That's the weight of the brake. The other force will be the force drag this unit move upward. That's the weight of the counterweight. So the net force of this unit will be the large weight minus the light weight. That's the net force net force of this unit will be this one. And according to Newton's second law, this is equal to the mass of this unit times acceleration. The mass of unit is the sum, the sum of these two elements. So that will be mass of the brake plus mass of the counterweight. Then we can solve the acceleration equal to the weight difference. The weight difference is mass difference times the g divided by the sum of the mass. So then that will be very quick to get the acceleration if we treat this two guy as one unit. Do you have other question? Okay, if there's no question, let me move on. Uh, next problem. And we are going to talk about friction. Friction is a tricky part because we have two different friction. One is called static friction. The other is called kinetic friction. What's the difference of those two? Um, here, think about um, a block on a table. Or you can think about it, there's a car. On the street. And the car is at rest. 
it's not moving. And if you want to push a car, you want to push the car and the car still in the rest and doesn't move. The reason is when you push the car, the car gets a push force. It's a force from the push. But because this car is very heavy, the street has a very strong friction and this friction is going to counter, encounter the push force and everything get balanced. So the, the ground is going to give uh, friction to the car. And if there is a friction to the car, then if your push force is smaller than the friction, then everything will be at rest. And from this, unit, uh, from this diagram, you can find that because the car is at rest, so there's no acceleration. According to Newton's second law, the net force will be the push force minus the friction. This is equal to zero. So if the car doesn't move, the friction is always equal to the push. It's equal to the push because the car doesn't move. Okay. Then if we increase the push, the friction will increase, but the car doesn't move. But if your push force is large enough, for example, you have a truck to tour this car and connect with a truck. And the truck is going to, to tour this car and there is a force. Okay, then you draw the free body diagram, you find that this car has a pull force to the right and it's moving at the speed. And if this car is moving, then there is a friction. This friction goes upward. And this friction is called kinetic friction. The kinetic friction is different from the first case. The first case, the car is at rest and the friction is called static friction. Static friction will change depending on the push force, but the kinetic friction is a constant. The kinetic friction only depends on the roughness of the interface for example the roughness between the ties and the street then the second one is the normal force or we can say the pressure on the interface. The car is on the street, so the car is going to compress the street. Then the, the street will give a counter force and to balance this pressure. So if we just write down this as an equation, then we will have the kinetic friction kinetic friction equal to a coefficient called mu coefficient mu k times the normal force. The normal force is the pressure from the car to the street, right? Because uh, that's the action and reaction force. If the car, if the car give a uh, pressure to the street, it's a pressure, coming from the wind, then the street will give a car a reaction force for the normal force. That's the action and the reaction pair force. The car give a pressure to the 
street. Let me draw this diagram. The street has a pressure and the car has a normal force. Okay, so kinetic friction depends on the coefficient times the normal force. We know the normal force for the car is equivalent to the weight. So if the normal force doesn't change, the weight doesn't change, then the normal force doesn't change. And also the mu k mu is a coefficient, depends on the roughness of the interface. The roughness of the interface doesn't change, then this mu doesn't change. So it doesn't depend on the speed or the drag force. The friction, kinetic friction is constant. That's why we have two parts in this graph. The first part is friction increase with the drag force. And the second part is friction is a constant and it doesn't depend on the drag force. So now it's very obvious we know which part is kinetic, which one is static. The first, uh, yeah, the first one, the first part is static. And the friction increase when we increase the pool. The second one, if the pool is larger than a threshold, then the um, friction will stay a constant. In this part, this, uh, this block is moving and the friction doesn't change. Part B, find the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the block and the table. To find the coefficient, we are going to use this equation. Uh, okay, so the friction from this diagram in the kinetic part is 50, right? This is 50, 50 Newton. 50. And the normal force, we know the normal force equal to block and the weight of the block. So that will be the 135. This is equal to mu times, so the mu is equal to 50 over 135. And you can find that this number is smaller than one. And usually the kinetic friction is smaller than one. Um, if, when, if you do some calculation and get the friction coefficient larger than one, um, you have to be careful. There might some mistake happen in your derivation. But for the static coefficients, it doesn't guarantee this is equal to uh, smaller than one. So for example, in this one, to get the static coefficient, we know the maximum of the static friction depends on the weight times the coefficient of static. And from the curve, we know um, the mu here is a slope of this curve. The slope. So the mu s static coefficient is equal to one. Okay, that's a different. Do you have any question? Okay, so um this is a solution for this question. I'm going to the next problem. The next problem, I'm going to show you um, how to use free body diagram and Newton's second law to solve the acceleration. And how do we use acceleration to figure out other parameter in this motion? So it says there is a force, 96 Newton, and we know the angle, and we know the mass, and we also know the friction coefficient is 0.3. And uh, this book initially is at rest. Initial velocity is zero. So what's the speed after it travels 0.4 meter off the world? Okay, so the speed goes up and we know the displacement is 
we know the initial velocity is zero. We are going to solve the final velocity. And to solve the final velocity, if you still remember, we need three parameters to solve the final velocity. We already know two parameters, so we need one more. So we should know either the time or the acceleration. Which one should we know? From the description, it's very hard to get the time. We don't know the time, but we can use Newton's second law to figure out the acceleration. Right. So if we know the acceleration and to solve the final velocity, we only need the equation without time. That will be the final velocity equal to the initial velocity plus 2ax. This placement is no. Initial velocity is zero. So to get the final velocity, we only need to know the acceleration. Then let's use Newton's second law. The Newton's second law tells us the net force in the y direction equal to the mass of this book times the acceleration, right? So if we know the net force, then we will solve the acceleration. To get the net force, we have to draw the free body diagram. Let me draw here. There is a wall. There is a book. Let's follow the rule. First one, gravity. Right, gravity goes up, goes down. Second one, normal force. Normal force is perpendicular to the surface. The surface is in the vertical, so the normal force goes to the right. That's normal force. In this way, because the weight and the normal force are not in the same direction, we have to figure out, we have to point out that the weight is not equal to the normal force. It's very important. Second one is normal for third one, friction. Friction here, we know the book move up. So the friction should block this motion. It goes down, that's a friction. And the last one is external force. External force now is F, push force. So we have F goes in this way. Since the F is not parallel to either axis, so we're going to separate the F into the Y axis and X axis. So this F, X, this is F, Y. And we know this angle is 60 degrees. Okay. So let's define the positive direction. Let's define positive direction, Y, X. Then let's write down the y component because we want to know the acceleration in the one y component. In the y component, we have this equal to uh, fy. Here, the fy is the y component of the force. The y component of force actually is equal to the force times sine. 60 degrees, and this is positive, so it goes up. And weight, we have the weight minus the weight. Weight goes down, so that's ne negative. We have mass times g, that's weight. And the last one is friction. There's a kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is equal to the mu coefficient times the normal force. Okay. Um, let's see. This is equal to ma. Let's see how many parameters do we, we know in this equation. We know the force, 96 Newton. We know the weight and we know the coefficient, but we don't know the normal force. If we don't know the normal force, we can't solve the acceleration. To get the normal force, we need to use the horizontal component. So in the horizontal direction, we have other relation that will be the fx, that will be the normal force minus 
the x component of the force, so f cosine 60 degree equal to m a x, the x component of acceleration. But in the x component, there's no motion, so this is equal to zero. So we have a normal force equal to the x component of the force. Okay, so from here, we get uh, the normal force. The normal force will be 49, uh, 48, 48 degrees. If the, the normal force is soft, then let's plug in the normal force into this relation, normal force, then we can solve the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to, equal to what? Um, 178 meter per second squared. We get acceleration from this equation. Then when we have the acceleration, then we can plug in here. Acceleration is 198. Then the speed is equal to the square root to a x, so that will be, uh, hold on, oh, hold on. I got this number wrong. The acceleration is 3.95. Then after we do the calculation, the speed will be 1.78. Okay, any other question? Okay, if no other question, I will give a short summary to solve this kind of problem. So the summary. So three steps. First one, we're going to draw the free body diagram. It's very important to include all the force into the graph. Then for the x component, the y component, write down the Newton's second law. Newton's second law give us the acceleration. So the net force in the x direction equal to the m, acceleration in the x component, and f in the y equal to the m a y. Then when we know that uh, the acceleration, we're going to use the linear relation between displacement, speed, and time and acceleration to solve the rest of the parameter. And in this case, if we know three of the parameter, then we can solve the rest of two. So this is how we do the problem. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. We have 10 more minutes.